Good day IGCSE, ICT students and welcome to this training video. This will be looking at paper 3 solution and we're still going with June 2008. As you are aware of, paper 3 includes Microsoft Excel, which is data analysis, web authoring, which we will be using SharePoint Designer, and more advanced PowerPoint and uh, master slide. Okay, let's open up the question paper just to double check. This says we're doing practical paper three. It's May, June 2008, and the allotted time is two and a half hours. Okay, scroll down to the first question, and we're starting with Excel. The question says, working for a company called Hot House, you're doing some uh, clerical tasks. Using a suitable software package, load the J8 phone.csv. If you notice here, it says suitable software package. While when we were doing access, it actually said, when, it, when we were doing data manipulation or database, it actually said using a suitable database package. In here, when we double click J8 phone.csv, which is in there, Excel actually opens up automatically. So uh, we don't want the confusion between Excel and Excel, uh, access and Excel. In this case, we're doing Excel. It's called data analysis. The other one was access data manipulation. Okay, we open that file. In the department column, use a lookup function to show the department name. Use the code column for the lookup value and this file, J8 code. So I need to open this file as well. I'll minimize this and open that file. J8 code dot CSV. Double click that. It's in there, so I've got my both of my files in. Now, as I am looking at this data, I see something is funny or not visible. And this is all these numbers. Well, if I click on it, I will notice, oh, there is actually, it's a date. This means I need to make this bigger, the column. I just s uh, place my mouse between the A and B columns, and I double click. Everything is visible. Well, somebody asked Matteo, well, I could have clicked and just dragged. Yes, you could. Double clicking will take the largest one, the largest the largest cell in in number of characters, and make it as big as that. Okay, so let's understand what we have to do in the department column, which is there. Use a lookup function to show the department name. Okay, I need the department name. I have the department code. If I look at the other file, which is the J8 code, it actually has department code and the department name. You can already figure out, I think, what we're going to do. We're going to look for the code and get the appropriate department, place it in here using a lookup function. For So we are going to use the decode column, which is this, for the lookup value and the file g8code.csv for the array. Make sure that you use both absolute and relative referencing with your function. So let's try it for one. That function, I'm looking at this vertically. It's going to be the lookup. You could do this in some other function, but this is the easiest one. Click on f of x. If VLOOKUP is not there, you're going to type it here. VLOOKUP will come. Double click it. Now, lookup value is one and only one. I can't repeat this enough. Only one value. I cannot do this on the value because I'm not looking up for all of them in one shot. I have to look up for only one and only value. And this is that one. One value table array has got to come from this other file which I have opened and it's there and the table array in this case is going to be that okay do you notice you're going to look up for MD in this whole list which is there and you're gonna find it there and you're going to return which column the second one if I go back there I'm going to return the department name because I have the code so uh, and the column index and it's a number I look on that and I put two and automatically gave it to me. It automatically gives it to me, managing director. I click OK. Now, I have got to double check this absolute referencing and re relative referencing. What's absolute referencing? Well, absolute referencing, if you can see it, it's there. Absolute referencing means this never changes because even though I'm going to be looking for AC, which is the next code, this range, that one, never changes. Why? Because it's going to be the same all the time. And this is the absolute reference referencing point of this. The relative referencing is this, because it's going to change. For the first decode, 
it's going to be B7. Well, what is it going to be for the next one? It's going to be B8, B9, B10, all the way up to B13. This is where the absolute referencing and the relative referencing comes into play. And how do I know if something is absolute referencing? Well, if there's dollar signs all around it like this, that means if I replicate the, the formula down, this is not going to change. It's going to be fixed. It's like a variable that never changes. Okay? All right. Now, we've done the first one, and we've got managing director. It says replicate this function. And I'm just going to single um, hover the mouse over this area. I can click and drag. And I got all of them. I'm going to undo this just to show another way. I will place the mouse there and double click. Same thing will happen. Okay. That concludes the first question. Oh, that was quick. Okay. Next, enter the following data into the model. And this is going to go under the rate. I already have C, I, and P. So I'm going to go here 1.13, 1.6. Just entering data. Make sure they're correct. Name the cell containing 1.1 cheap. I'm going to click on 1.1, which is there. And this is how I rename the cell. Name box. And I'm going to call it cheap. After I'm done, I click away and I click back, ensuring that it's cheap. Because this chip will be used later and you will see where. Next one will be Intel for international. I-N-T-L. Sorry, do you see the mistake I even made? I'm going to leave that intentionally because I make mistakes just like you do. As long as you are focused. I undo and I need the Intel to be there in the name box. Intel. I go away from the cell, come back and it's still Intel. The last one is supposed to be peak. And I single click up there and I do peak. Okay, now. This is cheap, this is Intel, this is peak. I have never had to come back to it again. I'm sure I named it what they want. Format these three cells as numbers to one decimal place. I select this. Okay, this formatting to one number could be done in more than one way. I can go right click, format cells, and under number, I just make it number, and I make it one decimal place, click one, uh, click okay, and I'm done. As long as you can show this, then you're fine. Okay, next question. Format cells A2, A3, and A4 so that they are right aligned. A2, A3, uh, sorry, A2, A3, and A4 so they are right aligned. Done. Use the counter function that includes both, again, absolute and relative referencing in cell C7. I gotta go there first. That's cell C7. Okay, to count the number of MD entries in the decode column. See, MD is there. And this is the decode. But this is not what they're talking about, as in not starting from here. Because if I continue, it says, do not count any entries in rows 1 to 13. That means I've got to start from 16, which is here. So I'm looking for all the MDs in there. I want to count how many MDs exist. This is what the question says. All righty. So I'm using a count a function in cell C7 to count the number of MD entries in the decode column. So I'm going to click on this, go to f of x, and I'm going to assume countif doesn't, I don't see it here. I'm just going to search for it again. Countif, double click that. What is the range? Where am I looking for this data? I'm looking for it in there. This is the range. Okay. What am I looking for? And the criteria is one. You cannot do this. You just can't. Well, as I say you can't, and then I say Excel allows you, but this is the incorrect answer. I want only one value. And as you can see, it's already 16. I already know what the value is. Well, somebody's saying, but sir, if I do this, uh, sorry, let me do that again. If I do this, well, whoopie doo, it's 16. Okay, but it's incorrect because you included a range. So you will lose marks for this because you did not include one single value. Criteria is one single value or one single expression. So I'm going to keep it like that. I'm going to click OK. Now, what is the need, again, for absolute referencing? If I copy this now, and maybe many of you will actually do it, look what's going to happen. Can I, can I attract your attention to this part of the formula while I move down? Do you notice that this is also changing? This should not change. Why? Because the list, which is here, or the actual range, never changes. I'm looking for this value in the same range as this value, okay? So I'm looking for MD and AC and PR in the same range. I cannot change the range. So I'm going to go back and delete this and fix that up. 
I go back to f of x, just I, I did this just to make a point of the absolute referencing. Now, we select all of this, and we hit F4. Oh, well then, uh, what's his name? Uh, Ayrton says, sir, can I type these up? Well, be my guest. You go before the B, put a dollar sign. Before the 16, put a dollar sign. Before the B again, and before the 89. You want to do it that way? Hey, you can. Now it's absolute. This range is never going to change. I double click. Even the results might be the same as we did it in both ways. It, there's a possibility they're the same, but you will lose marks for not using absolute referencing. I'm uh, going to take a break, and I will uh, be back, catch my breath, actually, and I'll be back.